Hey guys, it's uh, me, Sean, from uh, C3 Cyber Club. This is our fourth video tutorial. Uh, we're going to be going over map models and trigger types. So if you haven't checked out our other videos with texturing, modeling, or entities, I definitely would check those out before you get into this one. So uh, let's get started. So map models. Uh, map models are pretty much, um, it's basically like furniture. You have an empty house. And uh, you need to place these. You need to place items in the house to make it look, uh, you know, furnish it. You have to make it look good. Uh, for example, I have a futuristic level here, um, sort of set there. You know, uh, got metallic textures here in the future, and you know, I want to use sort of uh, map models to kind of make my environment a little bit more interactive, give it more of a theme. You know, make it a little bit, give it a little bit more depth. So map models allow us to do that. So they can be from you know doors to uh, items to uh, pretty much anything that uh, that isn't sort of the geometry in the game so let's bring it up here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just press E and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press F1 I don't know if you notice most of our uh, menus are the, the function keys so uh, F1 is gonna bring up all the different map models it's very similar to the uh, the textures so for example we have benches pillars vase cart uh, the stuff that I'll be using here is the uh, biotank round um, it's mostly in order. Uh, we also have, you know, for example, food and drinks right in its own little category. Uh, vegetation from like trees to bushes. These are things you can utilize, you know, if you're making a forest. Um, even if we get to page five here, we actually have characters that we can put into the game. So I'm going to go back to uh, over here and I'm going to go on Biotank. Okay. So once you click on Biotank, it's going to pop up. And there's a couple ways we can. Um, move it around in our environment. Uh, this is our bounding box, okay, just like our entities. Uh, we can go ahead and move it off the uh, the y-axis here and also the z-axis up and down. I select the other side here. Uh, I can move it off this axis and also up and down. If I select the very top of the box or the bottom, I can move it just on the x or y-axis, okay. Also if I hold down the left click button and I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in, zoom out. And go ahead and move my map model right here. So that's pretty good. And uh, I want to rotate it. So the way to rotate it, there's two ways. Let me uh, show you the, uh, the, uh, the first way, and we'll show you the shortcut. Is uh, If you go ahead and press F3, this brings up our properties. Okay. So we have the direction, the map model itself, uh, the trigger type, the trigger tag, which we'll get into a little bit later, the radius, and also the color. So if I move the, uh, the direction of it, I'm going to rotate it here, I'll just change this number, just like that. Okay. If I'm going to change the map model and put in something different, I just cycle through these numbers. So every map model is assigned a certain number. Okay. So trigger type, trigger tag, we'll get in that a little later, and also the radius, which is how when you want the trigger type to be affected, you can make the radius bigger, and also the color. Now if you don't know what RGB stands for, it stands for red, green, blue. So this stands for the red value, this is the green value, this is the blue value. So I'm going to go ahead and bump up this number here to say 300, and you notice it turns red. And also the uh, the box here also turns right. So uh, if we took uh, our art class, Art 101, uh, if we mix our blue and our red together, we should get purple. So here's our purple. Okay. So it's all really about going in there and mixing the different color values if you want to change your map model to a certain color. So I'm going to go ahead and go to zero. That just is the default texture right there. Okay. Now, if you want to find a shortcut to uh, rotate your objects, just hold down R on your keyboard and use your scroll wheel, just like that. Uh, you can also cycle through all your different uh, map models just by using your scroll wheel. It's very similar to the uh, the texture, uh, the quick texture mode. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, my uh, bio tank right here, and I want to go ahead and make a few of them. Let's go ahead and copy it. So I'm going to go ahead and press C to copy. I'm going to go ahead and click on the ground and press V. And uh, now I just click on the ground and keep pressing V if I want to. There we go. Okay. Now, I have a door here. And uh, this door is actually, we can interact with it. For example, if we go up to it, it opens up. And uh, I also have another thing I can interact. I have a computer console. When I go to the computer console, it causes this door to open up. And these, this is, this is basically using trigger types to allow you to do this. And so let's go over that right now. Okay, so my door is a map model. If we go ahead and uh, let's start this from scratch here, and go ahead and just press F1. Um, let's go to uh, page three here. Actually, sorry, page four. 
you'll see some doors here. Um, there's a few more. There's a plain door here, a castle door, uh, but the futuristic ones are number door number three, number two, number three. And so what I want to do is I want to rotate it. So I'm just going to go over here, set to zero. And what I want to do is I want to have this door. Uh, I want to be able to interact with it. So I need to do something. I need to change the trigger type. So the trigger type, and there's a lot of different. There's many many combinations. So there's a, there's a few there's a few on the uh, the sandbox website, but it's, it's pretty hard to get to. But uh, I'm gonna go over just a few of them with you guys. So it's you can start building things pretty quickly. Uh, so number ten causes doors, or if you had like a chest or a trunk, um, it would cause it to open up. Okay. If you were to create like a, a coin or a, a horse or a, some other sort of map model, just because you sign a, a trigger type of 10, it's not going to cause it to actually open up. It's just not going to happen. So there's only certain map models that have certain functions that you can interact with. So 10 is causing doors and trunks to open up. So we'll set it to 10. And uh, let's test it out. Let's go over to it. And it looks like it's working. It's good. But say we want to have the door open up a little bit. Uh, we don't want to get so close to the door. We have it open up uh, a little bit further out. So this is where we change the radius. Okay. So this little threshold right here is if we cross this uh, radius here, it's going to cause the door to open up. So our character interact with it from a farther distance. There we go. Okay. Uh, I don't want to make it that big. So let me just drop it down a little bit. Uh, that's pretty good. And perfect. Okay. So we got a computer console over here that causes this door to open. So we're going to be using a combination of trigger types, and we're also be going over tags. Let's open this up and see how it's working. So we have a trigger type of ten, okay, and we also have a tag of two. So if you remember the uh, portals that we were making in the last video, video tutorial, uh, this number has to correspond with the door. So if we go to this door here, it's also set to two. All right, so they're going to work together in conjunction. So this has a trigger type of 10. So if we go over to this console, it's going to interact with something. It's going to cause something else to happen. Now, to have this door interact with the console, we have to change the trigger type to 11. OK? So we walk over to it. Works perfectly fine. It's great. Cool. Now. If we want to have uh, two consoles, maybe this console is going to open up this door. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. I'll just put it right here. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and make a new door. So what I need to do is, again, set it to 10, but I need to change the tag number because I want this to only work with this new door. So if I change this to 3, Now this will cause that door to open up, and this one will cause that door to open up. Okay. Now the great thing is you can copy all these values or these models, and it's going to copy the properties too. So I have this door here. Paste one there. Paste one there. So now when I go to this computer console, since they all have the same tag number, they all work together. Pretty cool, right? Uh, let's go over some other ones. Um, if we have, let's see, I'll bring, a, I'll pull up a trunk for you guys so you just get an example of how that's going to work. So I'm going to go to F1 right here, and uh, my trunk door or my trunk model. Let me look at my notes here. It's hard to remember all the numbers. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, 117 is my trunk. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull up one of these here, this map model, and uh, we'll go to 117. Oops, here we go. So if I set a trigger type to 10, this should cause the trunk to open up. Should. Keyword, should. Oh, well, let's change the tag number. Um, oh, whoops, looks like I didn't set it, sorry. And let me just change this to 5 right now so it doesn't interact with any of these things. There we go, perfect. So say we have a trunk of the game, but uh, let's make this a little bit more challenging. Um, let's add a key, and we're going to have this key actually uh, cause the trunk to open up. So I'm going to go over to uh, make a new map model here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and look for the key here. Uh, page 2, key. So here's my key.
And uh, for the key, we need to interact with the trunk. So let's go to trigger type. Now, to cause uh, this key to open up the trunk, we have to set it to 12. Okay? So 12 is going to allow us to take the key, and once we take the key, it's going to allow us to pick it up, and it's going to disappear. And again, remember, I got to change this to 5. Make sure it's the same thing as the trunk. And we need to set this to 11 because we want this to interact with the key. Okay, set to 5. So let's try it out. So I'm going to go over to the key. The key disappears. Chunk opens up just like that. Now, if I change the radius, let's make it a little bit closer so I have to get right on top of it for it to work. There we go. Okay. We can also assign this key to open up the door. So let's change this trigger type to, it, I believe it was two. Okay. And that, okay. So let's go to the key here. And there it causes the doors to open up. All right. So. There's also a switch that you can put into the game that you can interact with. Uh, this one is map model 21, so let's go ahead and change this to 21 here. And uh, we'll have a list of uh, stuff that you guys can go through on our website. So you guys uh, can easily find this stuff pretty quickly. Uh, let's go to this one. So I'm going to go over to it. Moved it. And now they open up. Oh, one last thing I want to show you guys uh, that's really, really helpful. Um, another trigger type is actually how to have your game end. So a lot of times you guys are making a game and uh, you get to the very end of the game, but uh, the game still continues to go. Maybe you have to grab a special item, maybe you have to meet a person. Um, we can set a trigger that allows us to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new map model here. Uh, let's go ahead and just maybe click on what's a good thing to use here. Uh, let's just do a character. Um, do the grizzly bear here. So with these map models, there's a set animation to it, and it just loops over and over and over. Now, it's not a creature. It's just a map model, so it's not going to chase you or anything like that. It's just going to remain here and just loop through its uh, animation. But uh, we're going to go ahead, and we need to get to this bear to basically finish the game. Uh, he's the master bear, and <laughs> we can only get to him to progress to the level. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this trigger type to number 29. 29 basically allows any map model that you touch to have the game automatically end. So let's go all to the very end. There we go. And let's test it out. And make sure you guys save your work before you uh, do this because if you don't, uh, the game automatically is going to end and you're not going to be able to save any work. So I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. So you press escape, save map. And I'm going to go ahead and just press save right now. And the more map models you have, lights, um, textures, it's going to cause the game to just slow down. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're doing it. So here we go. We got our bear. Uh, we're going to go over to him. It doesn't look very happy. We go over to him and the game automatically ends. So you see right here on the left hand side, the game has ended intermission. Trigger type 29. So there you go. So that's just a little bit about trigger types um, and uh, map models. There's, there's a lot to it. Uh, I just briefly went over just a little bit. So there's lots of different combinations, and we're really just only hitting the surface right now with it. But uh, if you guys uh, have any questions, uh, check out our website, c3cyberclub.com. Also check out uh, Sandbox uh, Game Maker. Uh, do that. Uh, they have some great uh, in-depth uh, tutorials on there or through the Wikipedia page. All right, so I hope to see you guys again, and uh, take it easy.